What is up everyone? This is Derek from Mediocre Streams here to do hopefully the first and what is to be many reviews. Today we are reviewing Mortal Kombat 11. I know it's been a month or two, but you know, I put a lot of hours into it so now it seems right to delve into it, you know? The rating system I will be using, because I can't speak for my brother, is I will be using four points. Graphics, story, functionality, and gameplay. Graphics speak for itself, story speaks for itself, functionality is how well the game plays, is everything put together well, uh, bugs, server issues, you know, is it, does, does it work? And gameplay, of course, is gameplay, the most important aspect of any game, you know, what we care the most about. And each of these will be rated on a scale of 1 to 5. It'll be totaled together for a score between 1 to 20. That will be our final score. See if that system works. First thing we're going to be talking about is the story. Mortal Kombat 11 takes place pretty much immediately after the ending of Mortal Kombat X. If you didn't see, or pfft, not a movie, only see the first movie. Uh, if you didn't play Mortal Kombat X, it ends with Raiden killing Shinnok, the bad guy. Uh, keeping his head on a pedestal, Raiden becomes an asshole, whatever. Right after that, we are introduced to our villain, Kronika, who is the Keeper of Time. She wants to create a new era, new era, uh, a phrase you will be hearing a lot in the game. Take a drink every time you do, although you might die because they say it over and over again. She's apparently been the villain throughout all the games. Everything's been going according to her plan, up until Raiden went on Shinnok. Now she's gonna take control, and she takes the past and the future, merges them together, so we got all these characters from the past, which was, it would be during the events of Mortal Kombat 9, being brought to now, so it's like a 20 or so year difference. And I think, you know, it's, it's pretty, a pretty simple story when you get down to it in terms of like bad guy wants to you know rewrite history and make mess with time for her own ends uh has all these little cronies that want whatever they want she promises them to them and heroes want to stop her uh where i feel like the story really shines is the character interaction and how they deal with like the past and the future, specifically when it's like a past character interacting with their future self. You get a lot of that with like Kano. That's really funny, him talking to himself. Johnny uh, talking to his past self because his past self's a young asshole and his older self's an asshole, but he's not as much. So that's really funny. You get a lot of funny stuff there. One thing I will point out that I think is uh, neato is the rules they set up because it's time travel stuff. Uh, they set up like neat little rules like can't harm your past self if you do something to your past self that will affect your future self uh, something with like Raiden where he's not affected by the time merger because he's immortal neat little rule stuff that I I noticed and I was like I like those details you know when it comes to time travel but I don't want to get too much into that stuff because the time travel stuff because it is complicated rule number one of time travel it's complicated but between you know the standard villain wants to do villainous stuff it's although it's pretty nebulous uh i mean she wants to create balance between light and dark chronica does but you know what this new era is we don't really get a good idea we just know it's in, involves shinnok coming back and light and dark whatever and that stuff's all right Character stuff is where it really shines. What I said before, you know, past characters, past selves dealing with future selves. That's where it's all, that's where the meat is, I feel, for entertainment. And you get into some good fights. You get some good, uh, you get a good chance to play most of the characters uh, throughout the various chapters. It's well put together in terms of uh, who you play and when you get to play them and all that. But I like the story. I think it's good. Not as good as Mortal Kombat X, I feel. I really like that one. I've rewatched that one multiple times. But this one, not so much. I don't really feel the need to go back and rewatch it. But I like it. it, it it's good for what it is. But of course, 
no fighting game would be complete without its roster and this game has a pretty good roster in terms of new characters the classic seven characters the uh, returning characters from uh, past games uh, I think it's 24 24 in total and then we'll get the DLCs later on but that's that's DLCs that's not main game stuff it's a good selection I really like who they brought back a lot of people from Mortal Kombat 9 like Cabal and Jade uh, return uh, we got a lot of MKX characters coming back like Aaron Black, Cassie Cage, Jackie Briggs, whatnot. We get the new characters like Collector, Cetrion, Gearus. It's a it's a good select like base roster, I would say. And they all have really unique movesets. It's a good selection. You know, but it, it, maybe not the ones I would have chosen for the base game, because you know, we're getting like Nightwolf and Sindel as DLC. Maybe you might have wanted them as base game characters, but for me it's good I like it most notable things they did for the game if you paid attention is the gear system if you played Injustice 2 and I'm gonna be referring back to Injustice 2 for quite a bit because there is a lot of similarities uh, the gear system allows you to customize your character you uh, get to have all these little gear pieces that are unique for each character and you level them up and you get to augment them I'll I'll get it I'll get into the detail but like go back to Injustice 2 and that you had you know like head chest legs arms some unique item piece you know like Superman's crest or Batman's belt here it's just three and that could be like you know Sub-Zero's mask his battle axe his you know whatever's on his belt or the you know, Cabal's mask his hook swords and his gas canister or Sub-Zero's mask a uh, Sub-Zero's mask Scorpion's mask, his katana, and his spear. It's three unique things for each person, rather than, you know, five or whatever it was for Injustice 2. And you also get skins. Now, whereas Injustice 2 had shaders, which were just the same, you know, your, your, your character, but with different color patterns. Here you actually have, like, I'd say, it's, it's like well over 60 for each uh, fighter. It's like, uh... I don't know, six or so color patterns for like several different skins. So it may be like human scorpion, and here's that in five different patterns, and here's Re uh, specter scorpion, and you know, several different color patterns. So you really, the game really gives you a lot in terms of m making a character look how you want, coloring them how you want, and, and that's something that I really. Uh, I really like it's different from the last game because it the variation system from the last game where you had like each character had three variations uh, has been changed into now you can have as many variations as you want you can name the variations whatever you want you can choose the icon and whatnot and you get to like choose uh, different abilities so you can really instead of it just being like here's the variation here's what you deal with now you can make it however you want terms of moves and stuff and you can make your guy look however you want so it really opens it up to more customization than what was in MKX and even though that does away with skins I really liked a lot of the skins they had in X I like customization I like that they let you make your guy how you want so that's I'm fine with that I, I really like it it's I think a highlight of the game but with each gear piece you have augments augments are unlocked through fighting and you level up the gear as of now you can only have two for, per gear I don't know why the third one is closed off I mean they're gonna add it later I don't know why it's not there now I digress but with these augments uh, these sockets they come in different shapes for different uh they're kind of like runes there'd be like a blood thing and a skull thing and a triangle you know and uh, each one unlike Injustice 2 where each gear piece had a set modifier, you know, you get bonus XP for whatever, or this move does whatever and whatnot. Now you actually get to choose, here's what the, the uh, augment I want on this gear. If it's, you know, a XP booster, if it's a, it, it gives you more uh, of the various currencies, we'll get to the currencies later, you can do that. I like it because it does let you decide, I like this gear piece. This looks cool on my guy. 
I'm gonna level it up. I'm gonna equip what I want on it that suits my needs, and I like that a lot better than Injustice 2's more rigid. I'm, I, you know, whatever word you want to use. This is the gear piece. This is what it does. And if you don't like what it does, or you don't like the way it looks, but like what it does, you kind of gotta deal with it. Now you, it, it's more open. And I like that. One thing I will note in terms of the characters, we do have a lot of returning voice actors. You know, Johnny Cage is the same and he does great. I can't remember the act. I, sorry if I don't remember a lot of the actors, but like, Johnny's the same. Raiden is still Richard Epcar, who I really like as Raiden. I think he's probably next to Johnny, the best vo voice actor out of the bunch. Steve Blum returns as Sub-Zero and I think he does great. But like, Cassie's different, Jackie's different. Uh, Sonya, if you saw the reveal, is obviously Ronda Rousey. That's different than who was before. Uh, it's a little thing, you know, little detail, you know, if you catch the voices and know it's like, hey, that's not who it was before, you know, that might bother you, but I thought everyone did fine, the new people they brought in, but that, that that's just a little side note. Overall, the good roster, good amount of customization that I really enjoy, uh, lots of really cool gear that you can use. I think going forward, this is something they should maybe stick with. You can disagree with me on that, but I really like the way this gear system is set up, and I uh, hope to see it expand expanded upon. In the game, you have three different types of currencies, four really if you want to count the premium cur currency, uh, which is time crystals. That can be used to buy unique gear and skins they may have on display in the menu, or uh, easy fatality tokens. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's kind of shitty that they're selling easy fatality tokens, but it's not like it. I mean, you gotta win in a fight to use them, first of all. So it's not like you're given any advantage. It's a it's a little thing, but uh, the three primary currencies are coins. We all know coins. Those have been around for a long time. Uh, soul fragments and hearts. Each thing can be used to unlock different kinds of chests within the crypt. We'll get to the crypt in a second. Coins can be used to reroll uh, sockets within your gear because you know if a gear it's randomly a, a different socket for a different augment type uh, and you can reroll that once you unlock two to get the desired combination. But the primary usage of the currency is in the crypt. The crypt has been greatly expanded upon from what it was before you know you used to be just you know going spending your coins to unlock things uh i was first introduced to it in mk9 and that was just a big field where you just pick whatever i think it was first inception maybe deadly alliance i don't remember but from where what it became in mkx to what it is now it is definitely a lot more it's almost like a different it's, it's a different mode basically because you're some random dude on Shang Tsung's, Shang Tsung's island in third person going around solving puzzles interestingly enough uh opening all these you have chests that can be opened through coins you have these chests that can be opened through hearts these things that can be opened through soul fragments all the while you're trying to solve these puzzles to unlock more areas of the island and there's also things you can do within the, the uh, crypt like the forge where you can gather resources that you get from the chest they can be used to craft like gear or items to unlock different parts of the island or you can craft more coins more souls it's a neat little idea that i think works pretty well although it does require a lot of trial and error to like find the right combination of uh, ingredients, the right recipe. You do unlock recipes that you can see in your collection, but you know, some will have question marks, so you'll still have to figure out like what that final ingredient is. You also have the shrine returning where you just put in however many coins and you get something random. Uh, the more coins you put in, obviously, the better the thing you're gonna get is. All in all, I really like what they've done with the crypt. It, cause it's, I'm a guy that likes for there to be more to do. And for this, there is a lot to do. And you can even uh, go up to these little things on the walls and uh, reset chests. You can just open them all up again and get random stuff. 
you can just keep spending your your you don't have to worry about accumulating too much of your currencies because you'll always get to reset things and you'll get more stuff you can get augments you can get uh consumables we'll get to consumables but i like the crypt i think it did a good job expanding on it now i touched on consumables consumables are a lot like in injustice 2 how you could have towers where you could call in someone to help you or you have some modifier now within towers you use consumables to like uh this will get you you know put, i i use uh xbox one so it'll be like you know press up on the uh, analog stick and you'll get health you know whatever percentage of health back or press the side and you can call in someone to help you but you use these consumables in the towers to assist you and then you got a uh consumable they last the entire tower because each of the regular three ones or whatever you choose lasts only one match once the last old tower can do stuff like more coins or whatever per fatality more xp for your gear uh you know the boosters and whatnot maybe they'll disable uh modifiers that your opponent has it's a uh, really neat stuff that you can just play around with in the towers and now that we're at the towers what are the towers? Well, if you've played Mortal Kombat, you ought to know. Towers are, you know, fight one person, then another, then another, then another, what, you know. You have your basic towers that end with your character's ending. You have the short one, medium one, long one. You have the, the uh, endless one, speaks for itself. You have the survivor one that just goes on and on and on, but your health carries over from your last match, so you just go until you get beat, essentially. But you then have the Towers of Time. Much like the multiverse in Injustice 2, these are ever-changing uh, tower that you beat them, you get all kinds of rewards. They last for anywhere from a couple hours to a couple days even. And you get some pretty cool rewards out of them. Man. They're really neat. And you also have a more expansive version of uh, character towers where you can call in... Uh, like five towers I believe it is for a specific character you have fulfill specific requirements uh, you beat them you you'll get their ending but you get unlike a regular tower where you just get the ending doing these expanded towers you get uh, stuff for your guy I should also mention I kind of skipped over this in the customization you can also choose uh, different intros and outros for your guy. Each person has four or eight total and you know that's really cool so it's not just the same intro and outro over and over again. Back to towers. You can also do uh, special towers that require a token for you to open and those uh, yield great rewards. And there's this whole race against time thing that goes on for a couple days or so. Two days maybe? I, I think it's a week. Or the more towers you do, the higher up you are in the rankings, and the more rewards you get by the end of the uh, the uh, week, or, week or whatever. So th there's a lot to do in these towers. Uh, you can even have your AIs fight them, and we're go we're gonna get to the AI in just a second. So even if you're like, some towers require you to play a specific character, if you're not good that character. Let the AI fight them, and hopefully they'll you know do it for you. Now I touched on AI. Much like Injustice 2, you can Go to your character's uh, menu and check out their AI to like zoning, runaway, combos, reversal, grappling, uh, make them fight how you want. And then you can have those AIs either fight in towers or do AI battles, which like in just two, it's a three on three. You pick three of your guys to go up against some other person's three guys. It's uh, best two out of three. Uh, winning or losing, you get uh, some stuff, but obviously if you win, you'll get better stuff. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a fun little mode to carry over from Justice 2. Going back to the currency though, there is a bit of trouble with grind. Coins you get pretty easily. Those are, you know, you can get a thousand of those per fight. You know, they're not hard to unlock. Souls and hearts, those can, you know, you might want to hold on to those until you get a lot because, uh... Those can go away really quick when you spend them in the crypt, and they you don't get them that easily. You get like maybe three a match, 
even if and if you have a modifier on or a gear modifier you know you can get maybe five or more like there's a lot of grinding in that uh, regard for those currencies but you know maybe they'll fix that later on maybe they won't who knows but i just want to put that out there there is a grind now we're just going to touch on the graphics really quick really good like if you play injustice 2 you know the nether realms is using i think it's unreal is the they're using i can't i don't know for sure i know it's the havoc physics engine but i can't be sure what their main graphic engine is. but it looks right this is a great looking game uh and the cutscenes they i guess i would assume it's motion capture i think it is they get a lot of emote motion out of like with the way faces move and whatnot and, like it looks great and like you can see pores and all the facial hair looks really good like it's a really nice looking game environments look really good you know all the there's a bunch of uh arenas you can fight in they all look great it's very well rendered very well detailed i'm i'm greatly impressed with how much they improved from mkx which having just rewatched uh the cutscenes, like wow it's like almost it's not night and day per se but it's very very improved like netherrealms did a really good job uh with the graphics on this one i really like the way everything looks I feel like I'm just being repetitive on that point, but I gotta emphasize they did a good job in terms of graphic. Now on to the most important aspect of any fighting game. I think we can all agree it's the most important aspect of any fighting game, or no, any game in general, is the gameplay. How is the gameplay of Mortal Kombat 11? For me, as someone who's a bit of a novice at fighting games, I've never been much of an expert. Not that good with making like stringing combos together and whatnot i gotta give you know my opinion on this but i really like the gameplay in this i feel like it's improving even from where injustice 2 uh, was uh, i i can put together combos pretty easily i can do the special moves easily it's not that difficult uh although like i said i'm not good at stringing the combos together but that's just me. I I've seen plenty of people chain combos together like a motherfucker and just beat the shit out of me in online. So like controls feel really good. It very responsive. I really like them. Uh, much like Injustice 2, Mortal Kombat X, Injustice 1. Uh, you have stage interactions, so you can like grab something and hit hit a, your opponent with them. That's always really cool. I'm glad they're keeping that. Uh. X-ray moves have been removed. Uh, there are still X-rays in the game, but they occur when maybe you'll like uppercut someone. They'll show their jaw breaking, or you'll grab an interactive and hit them with it, and they'll show stuff breaking. But in terms of X-ray moves, they've been replaced with fatal blows, which are basically like the super moves from Injustice, but way more violent. You know, they'll be like Scorpion jamming his uh, spears through your eyes and blood just exploding out the back of your head you know stuff that would kill you but this is Mortal Kombat so it just does a lot of damage and unlike uh, supers or x-rays other than being something that you charge up on your bar and then use this is now something that's like a almost like a last resort like you get it when you're low on health and would almost use it to try to get an advantage on your opponent uh, hit them, lower their health, and maybe get a second chance at winning. But, we're going to talk about Mortal Kombat. We got to talk about fatalities. We got to talk about the gore. And, uh, holy fuck, is this game gory? I mean, this has. I thought they were going, <laughs> like, violent in MKX. And then I played this and I'm like, oh my god, there's so many brains, there's so much intestines, there's so much... It's so violent that it's amazing. It's, and, and, it's, and creative, creatively so, like, the way they use a character's abilities or their personality and play that into how they murder the shit out of you, it's, it's amazing. You, you saw the noob Cybot one. 
that is my favorite fatality in the entire game. It's just so brutal, so befitting of the character and his abilities. It's like in in all of and just about all of them. I'm I'm trying to think of a fatality that disappoints me, but honestly, they just they're all really good. You know, there were plenty in the other games where I was like, ah, that could have been that could have been a lot uh, more gory, but here they it's like great fatality great fatality good fatality good fatality great amazing fatality they knocked out of the park uh, like if there's anything you can give this game despite its problems that you may find you have to admit this the fatalities are amazing and you know, I have to emphasize that because they really do stand out uh, in the game as being spectacularly gory I'm, I'm pleased they did not tone down in any way the gore for that. Now we get to the end. Our final scores. I was going to wrap everything up by saying Mortal Kombat 11 is a what I feel a solid game. Solid follow up to X. Problems aside, I'm looking forward to wherever they go in, uh, in the 12th game. Uh, I really like this. So for scores and graphics, I'm going to give it a 4. Uh, it looks fantastic. You know, you heard me gush about how great it looks. But there are some areas where it's like facial stuff. It, you know, it, it, the, the facial motion capture, whatever, it does look good. But sometimes faces look weird. You know, if you play it, you might notice like what I'm talking about. Like, it's kind of weird looking in areas. But overall, it's it, if it wasn't for that kind of uncanniness it's not really the uncanny valley but just kind of like i just know something off about the way faces look it would be a five but as it is as a four story i'm giving a three that kind of it's uh, if it wasn't for the fun time travel past selves future selves interaction stuff it would kind of just be a regular old gotta beat the bad guy thing uh in the ending in, not to spoil it, but it makes you wonder where do they go next. It is a uh, now what? It's kind of a odd way to end your game. You know, it's not like MKX where it's like, okay, we can see where this goes. The ending to this game is very much what will 12 be. But I'm gonna give the story a three. Good, but not great. Functionality, uh, I've not count. Uh, I did have some server issues, connection issues at the beginning when I started playing. I would open chests in the crypt and it just wouldn't connect and it would kick me out. Uh, but uh, as of recent, connection's been fine, the servers have been fine, I've not encountered any any bugs. Yeah, the, the game functions pretty well, uh, that's been my experience. I'm going to give the functionality a 4. Now it's a, well, it's a well put together game in terms of how it works. But for gameplay, I'm giving a solid 5. I'm having a great time playing this game. Uh, I'm very satisfied with what they've done, with what NetherRealm's done. Uh, again, controversies aside, I'm not even going to get into it. You know, we all know stuff that's been, you know, brought up. But all that aside, I've had, I'm having a blast with this game. A gory, blood-filled blast. And, uh, yeah, a, five, a solid 5. And this leads to a total score of 16 out of 20. Uh, you know, I would say this for any game, but, you know, if you want to try it, rent it. Obviously, that's in, that goes for any game. But for this, I, I recommend it. I highly recommend it. 16 out of 20 is a good score for this new system I have that I'm just trying out for the first time. Mortal Kombat 11, for all of its problems that you ha may find that I have found, uh, it's a really fun game, really well put together, a uh, really satisfying game, I'm enjoying it, definitely give it a shot, 16 out of 20. But that concludes our first review for our first game review, this is our first game review, leave comments in regards to whether you agree, disagree, you know, you're allowed to have your opinion, this is all my opinion. Uh, what do you think of the rating system? Do you want to see more reviews? Uh, do you have an idea for what we should call these reviews? Because I don't, I, I, this is to be titled. 
uh, reviews. And, you know, check out our other uh, videos. Check out our Twitch, check out our Instagram, Twitter, blah, 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 blah. You'll see all that stuff when the credit screen or whatever rolls. Uh, but yeah, we will see all of you later.